In topic 05, we're going to be learning about absolute value, and we're going to return to practicing evaluating expressions, but this time with absolute value. Um, absolute value is a number's distance from zero on a number line. So if you look at negative 5, it's 5 units away from zero. So the absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. Positive 5 is also 5 units away from zero. So the absolute value of positive 5 is also 5. In other words, absolute value is always positive. And to use absolute value, they use the symbols that look like lines around your number. So that means absolute value. Do not take the absolute value until you're done simplifying whatever's on the inside. And then whatever you get for the inside of your absolute value becomes positive once it's simplified. So we're going to look at some examples here. In example one, we're evaluating for x equals 6. Remember, that means we're going to plug in 6 anywhere we see an x. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. But wherever I see a x, I plug a 6 in parentheses. Here, negative 4 is already simplified. So now we can take the absolute value. The absolute value of negative 4 becomes positive 4. I need to simplify my other absolute value. So before I take it, I need to work out negative 2 times 6. That's negative 12. Now I can do the absolute value of negative 12. The absolute value of negative 12 becomes positive because absolute value is always positive and I can bring down the rest of the problem. So 4 minus 12 is negative 8. When you have absolute value, do not do anything from the outside to it. So here, we're not going to change this to a plus 12 because absolute value is not the same as parentheses. You need to take the absolute value first before you do anything that's on the outside of that. So do not change the minus negative to a plus because the absolute value blocks you from doing so. On the next example, we're going to evaluate the absolute value of 2x minus 3y. I'm going to plug in negative 4 for x, and I'm going to plug in 3 for y. So let's simplify the inside. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and 3 times 3 is 9. So now I'm going to do negative 8 minus 9, which is negative 17. Notice I'm not doing the absolute value until my very end. So now that I have it down to one number, I can take the absolute value. The absolute value of negative 17 becomes positive 17 because absolute value is always positive. We're going to look at a few more examples. For these next problems, we're using um, negative 4 for w, 2 for x, 0.5 for y, and negative 6 for z. So I'm going to start by plugging in my 2 for x here. Remember, I'm getting these numbers from the top. And now I can simplify the inside. So 2 times 2 is 4. So this becomes the absolute value of 4 minus 8. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. And now that we're down to one number, we can actually take the absolute value, and it becomes positive 4. On our next problem, we have negative absolute value of 10. Again, x is 2, and y is 0 0.5. I need to simplify everything on the inside. This negative is going to stay on the outside until the very end. So 10 times 2 is 20, and 10 times 0 0.5 would be 5. Now if I do 20 minus 5, I get 15. Now that I have one number in the absolute value symbols, I can take the absolute value. So the absolute value of 15 will be positive 15. But this negative is separate. It's on the outside. So even though the absolute value was positive, that negative is still in the expression. So the answer to this one is negative 15. And that's because that negative was separate, so it was still there in the very end. On this next example, we're plugging in 2 for x. And for w, we're plugging in a negative 4. Now I'm going to simplify the inside. So 2 plus 5 is 7. So that becomes absolute value of 7. Minus, 
Here, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. So I have absolute value 7 minus absolute value of negative 8. Again, do not change this to a plus because the absolute value blocks it. Anytime you have absolute value, you need to take that first. So here, the absolute value of 7 becomes positive 7. We still have minus. And here, the absolute value of negative 8 becomes positive 8. So we did the absolute values, and now we can subtract at the end. 7 minus 8 is negative 1. So um, just because you have absolute value doesn't mean your final answer is going to be positive. It just means whatever's inside the absolute value becomes positive. But this one, because it became 7 minus 8, our final answer was negative 1. We're going to do one more. So here we're going to plug in um, negative 4 for w. And we're plugging negative 6 for z. And again, we're using 0.5 for y. And I need to simplify whatever's on the inside first. On this one, I can already take the absolute value of negative 4 because there's only one number in there. The absolute value of negative 4 becomes positive 4. And here this means they're multiplying, so it's going to become 5 times 4. Here I have negative 6 minus... 2 times 0 0.5 is 1, so I need to start making that one smaller. 5 times 4 is 20, plus 2, absolute value. Now in here, negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. So now um, that that's smaller, I can take the absolute value of negative 7. The absolute value of negative 7 becomes positive 7. And remember, this means they're multiplying. Notice I'm using PEMDAS, so I didn't do 20 plus 2 first because I have to multiply the 2 before I add the 20. So um, 2 times 7 is 14. And if I add 20 to that, I get 34 as my final answer.